Hello world, it's me, Dennis, and welcome to another reasonably spontaneous conversation. My guest from Florida, USA, today, Cedric Dunham. Hello, Cedric. Hi, uh, hello, how are you guys doing? It's a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. I was I got a chance to see you first. Renee Jaworski uh, did your interview and did an interview with you about American Sign Language and the work that we're doing here. First thing I want to ask is that I it drives me nuts that when sign language was first made, mm -hmm. why didn't they make it universal? Where one sign in one language would be the same thing all the way across in every language. It would seem like that was our opportunity. Right, right. I get it. Well, I, the thing is, um, it, it originally started in Canada and it passed on in America, Right. Now I'll say this: we we know every country does not speak the same language as us. I so know, I know, but 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 we still have the same word. If I say if I say bread in English, it would be bread in Spanish, but you could have the same sign. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I but, was just wondering why. I was just wondering what I, I guess, thought of. I guess everybody in their own countries have their own ways. You know. And I, I got to respect their language as much, you know. I do. I, I do. I was just I was just wondering, you know, there was a yeah, chance that Esperanto you know, to have. But I'll tell you this. This is a funny thing. Most of us understood. We understood what they're talking about. Yeah. When it comes oh, can to, you? Can you with a, someone who speaks a different language? You're right. We can understood depending on what it is. We can understood it because it's like it's similar. It's somewhere similar. Yeah. When it comes to it. So it's like. They might they may say something and I'm like, you mean this? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, like, you you will know, you know. Uh, you know, one of the, the other thing that, that so impresses me about sign language <clears throat> is how it actually helps me here. I mean, I'm I, as you can see, I'm I'm I now wear my hearing aids. So as I'm at 75, I'm beginning to to watch my hearing deteriorate. So I've been using captions and all, but boy, when I watch sign language it uplifts me there's something about a dance there's something about the way of the communication and are there great sign language people people that you admire that, that you know like they they are the the you know the the balanchine or the uh, you know or the great Burishnikov of sign language that are able to do it so beautifully yeah that i mean yeah it's it's very it's a very unique language it comes with emotions and expressions and it's all involved in there. It's from mind to body. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. When you even though you use closed caption, closed caption also helps. And it gives a lot more beneficial to us people where we our hearing is going down. And I find it very, you know, fascinating, including when it involves an American Sign Language. Because you use American Sign Language, that's closed captions with it. So it's yeah. it's you know, it's amazing because it's like you have to like really fall in love. You have to like dive into it. You dive into it, you will learn so much about this language. Wonderful. I mean, you never know. So so tell me, what are you you teach at high school? Yes, sir. I was teaching high school, yes, sir. All right. Here you are, 2023. What is going on within the minds and hearts of the kids today? Because I'm telling you, I am so inspired by the kids that I'm seeing. I'm I feel like there is something really positive going on that is not being covered in the general media and that. So could you could you yes. dive in? Yes, I can do that. So, OK, so I'll tell you about how the kids react to this. Um, kids, most of my kids are learning it a lot. They come and socialize with all the deaf people. They're very like they're like, you know, Mr. Dunham. How do you sign this? How do how do we approach that? How do we do this? How do we do this? And I give them those feedbacks. And when I give them those feedbacks, I show them that I'm like, hey, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. And I explain it details by details. These kids show a lot of passion because I told them, what if you have a family member that becomes, you know, deaf or lose their hearing, hearing, or you have a brother that was born deaf, what what would you do? How would you communicate? Yes. But isn't Cedric, isn't it an exercise in empathy that you can begin using across across all different opportunities and situations that are different than, than we are? Yes, I've come across all of them. I've seen it. I've been there. I've done it. I helped. I support it. I've I've known because I've seen it. 
not everybody knows it because I try to give that much, um, you know, backstory and aspects of what should you do? What are the options? What are these ideas that we can get you to understand and open up more? Instead mm -hmm. of being stuck on one thing, I want you to choose a lot of options. So that's why I give these kids these ideas when they interact with all these in the deaf community and they pick up so much. As I said, this year was the best year of my life because this is my first year teaching at high school. These kids actually pick up their science really fast. They they can do it. It's just they just gotta they just gotta come out here, practice it, learn it. I mean, it's not like Spanish. It's not like learning um Japanese <clears throat> or you know Germany. It's not like that. It's a language that involves in your daily basic life, everyday life. This is what we do every day. Yeah. We use it. So you know I mean it's it's I'm not I'm not gonna say it's common sense. It is common sense, but it's just you you have to see it yourself. It's a mind body connection because so yes. much of what we're doing. I mean, I know when when I look at when I look at uh, so many of the so many of the uh, language what we talk about is is that language gestures preceded language. Right. So we're still wired that way as human beings to be to to have gestures to animate. Now, even though I'm using gestures right now, they're not specific. I mean, I try to tell a story, you know, as as we move along, as we're trying and use my gestures. But yours get even more specific and dive down into the roots of the language. Right. Agreed. Yes, I agree with you. That's correct. It's sure. just, it, takes time. it takes time to learn this language. You know, it takes time, sure. but you pick it up as the more you the more you get involved, the more you do it every day, yeah. you will be a fluent person depending on depending on you. This fluency is just depends on the person. And it's not like like Spanish, it takes everybody a long time to learn it. I get it. But this language specifically is depending on the person. How yeah. well can you do it? How how far can you go? How far can you push yourself to you know you know meet the criteria of these things? Can you do it? Of course. You just got to practice it, you know. Yeah. Get involved. That's how you get fluent. And that's how you and, and that's how you're doing it. Well, so anyway, so what else are you involved in besides your in, in addition to your school? You're also you're also a uh, a performer? Um yes, I'm also a teacher hip hop, you know, I teach hip hop. Also, I'm also a dance teacher. I teach hip hop at Beach Street Dance Studio. That's another um thing I do. Um, yes, I do perform. I haven't performed in a while, but I'm trying to get back into it because it's been a minute. Um, I'm still doing like some types of videos, you know, all that stuff. I'm still doing it. I know I got, I know I have another video shoot coming up July 15th, but I'm not sure what the details going to be yet. Yeah, which is, you know, it's awesome. So I'm just like doing more than what I'm expecting to do. Um, on top of that, I'm also a martial artist, which I do martial arts. Uh, and talk one which, which martial arts do you do and how what is what has attracted you to them cedric um what the martial arts yeah which martial art which martial art do you do oh um i i'm actually in, in taekwondo taekwondo um i've been doing that since i was seven so i've been doing then and i kind of got back into it when i was like maybe 21 maybe 20 21 and i got back into it and i'm still doing it as of today yeah, and I'm and I'm teaching kids there also and adults, so I'm doing a lot more than what I'm expecting. Yeah. Not when I was expecting, but I'm doing it. You know, learning a lot more, and I'm learning everything else. You know, as I go. Can we talk some about the racial dynamics that you've been through? I mean, when when I was growing up, I grew up in the Jim Crow South. I'm sure mm -hmm. your grandparents or your parents would have would have experienced that or at least been on some of the, the edges of um, that. Uh, my mom is actually from my mom. My family on my mom's side is actually from British. So they all live from British. So they haven't told me much about, you know, that racial thing, because I don't think they didn't come here until maybe like after the 60s. Ah, uh, so well, I, but as you're thinking about it, because as you're, as you talk to young black men who have hearing impaired, mm -hmm. is there a difference if a policeman comes up to the car and you have to let them know that you have a hearing challenge that you need to do? How does that uh, work? Well, how do you how do you talk to them to make sure that you're safe? 
Yeah. Well, most most important thing I tell them is I said, I know I get it that there are young black men in America. I always tell them, hey, just comply. Just tell them, let them know that you're deaf and hard of hearing. All I can tell them is just put your hands up like this and go like this. Just put your hands up. Don't do anything. Just go like this. As long as they, as long as the cops can see it, they're like, okay. I tell them, pull down, the, just roll down the window, keep your hands up and just go like this. Or put your hands on the wall and go like this. One hand on the wall, one hand on the ear. Yeah. So that way they don't, so the cops can see, okay, okay, I see now. But that's the problem with the cops nowadays. They don't really, they don't really pay attention. They don't, they think everything is all a bad guy, bad guy, bad guy. Yeah. And I don't, I don't always support that. And I always try to, and I was meaning to talk to most of the police departments, which I did talk to last summer. They were supposed to call me to, um, you know, to educate some of the police officers, which I'm still trying to follow up with them about it. Good. I haven't heard anything, haven't heard anything back yet. That's but wonderful. Still, yeah, so I'm still following up with that too. Um, I'm trying to see if I could get into their workshops and see if I can discuss what they can do when they approach a deaf person, no matter if they're black, white, you know, anybody. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've been having problems with police officers are not really, you know, doing the right thing when it comes to a deaf person. And like I said, I, I know it's a couple of years ago when we had a deaf person that got shot because the police are talking, but they don't even know he's deaf. So they they need to be more open minded that they can approach somebody that's dis that has a disability. But I'm not going to say that us being deaf is a disability because we don't take it as a disability, even no. though it's even though it's a disability, as they say in America. Sure. It's a di it's a disability in that. But but our opportunities to be able to use them to expand our empathy and right. to expand the different the different areas of your own sensitivity. Right. Right. So that's what it is. That's what I'm trying to. That's why most of us are trying to spread a message. But these cops got to, you know, got to cooperate, you know. Yep. They gotta get involved in understanding what to do. I mean, exactly. I've met some wonderful cops. I ain't gonna lie. I met some wonderful cops. They understood. I say one percent of them. One percent of them understood. Yes. The rest, like, yep. okay, I don't care. I'm gonna do whatever I feel like doing, you know. And that that right there is like a bad reputation. That, exactly. You know, nobody. I, and that's one of the things. I, I, that's why I'm really pushing for us to be able to have more empathy for one another. I think it's very, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk with you, I mean, because I wanted to help understand, to more understand your world. What is it like to be Cedric? So what are you looking out at uh, at 2023 and, and beyond? What kind of vistas and things that you're interested in? Well, right now I'm just trying to, you know, talk to people, you know, you know, put myself out there, you know, grow my reputation of making everybody say who I am, what I do and why I am teaching American Sign Language, why I'm doing martial arts, why I'm teaching dance. I've been trying to push myself out there and I'm still doing it as of today. So I'm really trying to spread a message. Yes. It's a message that I want to spread. I want people to like call me and say, hey, can you do an interview with us? Hey, can you do this for us? You know, that's what I want to do. But I'm just trying to get out there and reach it, get somebody to say, all right, I want I, I would like you I want let you to you know, elaborate this you know I want to do something big I want to create that I'm trying exactly. to make I'm trying to make American Sign Language more knowledgeable because the problem is a lot of colleges do not accept that as a credit for foreign foreign language credit. Really, why is that? That doesn't seem to be to be a, a me to be a, a a reasonable thing to do. Why are they not? What's the problem? I don't know. That's the thing. And American Sign Language is improving. It's improving every year. But it's just some of these colleges are not, you know, and these where I have these high school seniors are telling me that, you know, I have this, I want to go to this college, but they don't accept American Sign Language. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. You know, is and that I, changing? Are there some that do accept it? Um, Some do. Yes, yeah, some do. And some okay. don't. Well, how do they have? Is American Sign Language standardized? I mean, is it stand or or is there a like we have a standard English that would be you know to be able to or is it evolving? How does it work? Is there is there a group um, that that 
I mean, in high it? school, in high school, you you complete two years of foreign language, and then you get the full credit, and you go to college, whatever you want to go to, to actually a university. Basically, you get to go into a university, a mm-hmm. public public college. You can go into it anytime, any public college. But it's just university is just the main number one that just accepts a certain language. So uh-huh. it depends on which university they're going to. Not all universities accept it, but it's coming. We we just gotta push it out there. We just gotta get them to see it. Say, hey, the American Sign Language. You know, they don't know that American Sign Sign Language started in Canada and spread throughout U.S. America. They don't get that. Yeah. But it's, they just need to know. You know. What else is going on in your life, Cedric? That that that's um, fun or amazing and and part of your your own renewal and excitement. All right. Well, at this point, I'm actually, you know, in my life right now, I'm actually trying to, you know, do more TikToks, spread, you know, teaching science, do, you know, education through TikTok and um getting everybody to learn a lot more through TikTok. Um, I'm hoping everybody can find me on TikTok and learn from me. Um, I'm also trying to, you know, be working with more kids during the summer. It is about to be summer, so I'm trying to spread my message with the little ones also. You know, that's that's part of me. Working with kids and spreading my message comes together as a one whole, you know, like a speech, you know. Yeah. But I am actually, you know, improving, improving myself to Do the little ones enjoy it? Did the little ones enjoy uh starting to learn the sign language? Oh yes, they love it. And it actually helps them more because it helps you more with communication. And that interacting more, you know, and it helps. And it helps. And that's what these kids need to, these days. They need more interacting, more, you know, get it, getting into that culture. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. And they just yeah. need to get into the culture in the classroom. It needs to be a culture here where I need to see one, one of them two talking. One of them two are becoming friends and having a conversation. I mean, yes. I get that. I get that it's hard to work with pre-K Pre-K kids, first graders, second graders, kindergartens, you know, especially the ones that are autism, because I used to work with autism kids. They're awesome kids. They're very smart. Like, I love them, but I get that some of them are struggling with communication, as in speaking. Right. So what I do is I teach them a sign language. I say, hey, you want water? They go shake their head. Yes. I'm like, you want food? Yes. And I sign it because that helps them get better. That helps them. So as I'm of course, working- it's another way of connecting because it's not a passive activity like reading. You actually have to go and have some kind of a motor skill coordination, which would take me away from the concern. Right. I'm, I'm just riffing here. You tell me if I'm close. But it, but if if in language there's a certain part of the brain, but in in the physical kinet- kinetic part, it would take it a different route that would allow me to express it. Is that, does yeah, that at all? Expressing, yeah. Yeah. It allows them to express. Yeah, exactly. I'm giving them that extra, you know, that extra, you know, skill. That's so, gotta, that, that's gotta impact them behavior wise. That's gotta yes, be a positive, it does. Actually, way, it does. a positive way all around. If Because if they're, if I'm taking my time to do this, I'm not over there. You're right, doing anything I shouldn't be doing, exactly. So they're taking the time to communicate. They're taking the time to open. Now they start to open more. So these how, this is how I teach these kids. Once they start open more, they come to me and give me a hug, and they say thank you, and they even sign it. They say thank you, and I'm like, yes, thank you, right there. I'm like, yes. You know, so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach people to do more. That's, you cannot limit yourself. I don't like to limit myself. I like to do more things. So what a beautiful way to teach world peace through the science, through sign language and a way of connecting one another. You've really made me a fan. I can see how how valuable this would be to kids as they were getting into it. And and then we can spread that from there. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And that's always going to start. I mean, I can start from the bottom and move it back up to the top. No matter what, I can always start from the bottom again and move it back to the top. I never give up. I always say, let's do it this way. You know, I fight for it. I fight for them. I fight for these kids. I make sure these kids have anything they need. I'll make sure I fight for it. You know, and that's where I am coming up, how I grew up, 
you know, learning to, you know, accept one another, respect one another, support one another. No matter what anybody's going through, I'm always going to support them. And that's what I would do with my high school kids, pushing them to be great, pushing them to take this language and use it in the real world. Because I tell them, you go to any job, it's always going to be that one special person that's going to show up at that job. They never know. And that day will never, ne never know. And so we, we have to keep our minds open and keep, keep our hearts open. Those are two things that we have to do in order to be able to really to make a contribution in this world. Yes. And I always I tell them a good heart leads to a, leads to everything. You know, a good heart leads to everything. And that's uh -huh. why I, that's why I just give it to them. I say, there you go. Use it. That, that that just inspired. Well, what what have we not talked about that you'd like to talk about today that I haven't brought up today, Cedric? Um, I want to talk about uh, certain things. Let's talk. I want to talk about certain things coming from AS American learning about learning American Sign Language. When anybody's learning American Sign Language, even if it's online, make sure the resources are the correct. You know, the correct pe people. Because there are some people online that are not showing you the right signs, the right ways of learning American Sign Language, because that's not how you learn American Sign Language, you know, you know, when it comes to things on, you know, social media. And you have to find the right people with the right resources. Now, if you know- well, How do I vet them? How how, how can I- uh, um, can, Okay, let's, yeah. say, let's say TikTok, for example, because I know TikTok's been showing a lot of um, American Sign Language, but- there are some people that I know and the others that I know, the others that I do not know personally or them, but I heard of them, those people don't teach you the right way. They show you, they may show you, but it's not the correct way of saying it. How do you vet someone to make sure that they are teaching me the right signs? So um, you can, like I said, if you know anybody, depending on where you live, if you know anybody that knows American Sign Language or somebody that knows American Sign Language, I suggest you get to them, get in contact with the people there. Um, there is a website, I believe it's called ASLTA. I think it's it's a American, it's something with ASLTA as a teacher association. You can mm -hmm. also call them to get, get in touch with them about it and see if they can tell you, but there's always a website, resources. You know, resources for that. You know, you can type in YouTube and say, what is the sign for this? Now, when you see that, you will see people that actually show the strap of showing it the right way. All right. So that's how you would know. You wouldn't know if you feel something is not right. You would know. All right? Can you see can you see an AI, uh, an AI being able to 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 translate sign? I mean, so that I would be able to talk into an AI and then it would be able to it would be able to give back to be able to see. So I would um, be able to see it. An AI. I don't know. I we never I never in the community ever talked about the AI, but I don't think I will approve that because. I mean, how were they able to do it? Were they how were they able to understand what to sign and what to do? It's a computer. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. It so many things are changing uh, so right. fast, and uh, so we'll see how they are. Cedric, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank oh, you for being part of this uh, process. Uh, I am, I'm delighted to know you. I'm delighted to know that you are out there teaching the kiddos and teaching the rest of us to be able to know to communicate in the languages of the head and heart in a way that we can all connect. Yes, agreed. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, on Reasonably Spontaneous Conversation. Thank you for joining Cedric and me. And we will see everybody next time. All right. Bye, guys. This episode of Reasonably Spontaneous Conversations has been brought to you in part by In Search of the New Compassionate Male. For more information, go to newcompassionatemail.com.